Dudes to Dads is a podcast to help men understand and navigate the transition of being a single dude into a family man. How do we make sense of it all? Well, we probably won't be able to, but let's go ahead and have some fun trying. And we're back. We are back. I'm Jason Kreidman. I'm Alan Bush. And this is Dudes to Dads. And that's it. Thank <laughs> we you. Are We're that. done. <laughs> hey, see you later. <laughs> Welcome to another show. Yes. Uh, interesting topic for today. What to do when your child favors one parent over another. Oh, you isn't know, that interesting? I hadn't thought about that because I kind of was raised with my separate parents at separate times. So I, I wouldn't have them all kind of at one time. Well, you said your grandparents. My grandparents. So it's. Yeah. You know, did you favor your grandma versus you know, I'm not, you know, no, no, you don't need to say it. Uh, no, no. Uh, it, but it, the idea yeah. that, you know, you favor one parent over another for all different kinds of reasons. Yeah. One's softer. Yeah. One's more affectionate for sure. One's the fun parent. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of reasons. Why I can that see happens. that. And I, I can't really speak to my nine year old self or eight year old self. So right. I can't, you know, really accurately depict that. I, I would think that I, you know, love them equally, but there's probably different reasons why. Yeah. You know, because like you said, someone's a little bit more like my grandma was home more. So sure. I was a little more attached to grand, my grandma, you know, but then as I got older, my grandfather, you know, kind of became more of the outgoing and he even relinquished more to me. So then I started respecting him sure. differently. So. Yeah. And I can speak to my own personal experience with this, with my children that for sure there were times that I had felt less favorable. (laughs) Uh, And so I was going to get into that. So I've, I've broken out uh, the discussion, if you will, into three sections. Okay. The first is as a, the baby. So, you know, pregnancy, you know, after the baby's delivered yeah, and it's a baby. Yeah. (laughs) That's the baby phase. The Um, The second is the toddler. Yep. You know, so that could be two, three into four or so or whatever. Yeah. And then after that is the young child. So five and up. Your kids. Four, this yes, yes, my kids. Yeah. So I was going to just speak to those different phases. Sure. Um, and and I actually then have some input uh, when we get to the young child from from an actual professional. <laughs> so there's a, there was a great article and there's actually professional advice from uh, a psychologist. So, okay. So. It's legit. Okay. There's some legit info versus just what we think, you know, (laughs) which is not necessarily illegitimate. Right. It's just, it has a little more credibility. Yeah. A little bit more credibility when you have that doctor PhD thing that they do. (laughs) Study for 20 years. Yeah. Yeah. And and they actually see patients and, and, you know, have a license. (laughs) Exactly. We're just having fun. Exactly. Right. right. And, and talking from our own experience. So, you know, it's one thing to, um, kind of feel that you are not the favorite parent. That's one aspect. Mm. The second is to feel that you are the favorite parent. So and there's both sides. Yeah. The that. pessimist versus the optimist, so right. to speak. Yeah, you yeah. can take it however you want. <laughs> um, Egotist versus the, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've had, uh, I've had more experience of being the not as favored parent versus the favored parent. I, I think as my think kids, that's are up. kind of the natural result of mom and dad dynamics. We're going to talk about it. Oh, oh. foreshadow. <laughs> <laughs> very, very good. That's a perfect transition. So the first section, if you will, or discussion is the baby. Yeah. And so what happens is, and, and I'm talking you know, stereotypes, traditional, however you want to do it. For sure. The mom is breastfeeding the baby. Mm-hmm. So the baby gets food <laughs> from yeah, the baby. I mean, <laughs> the baby. To, simply put, they get food there. Right. Yeah. The baby is also <laughs> typically spent, has also just spent nine, ten, so I was just corrected. It's actually like 10 months gestation, but Whoa. nine months yeah. in the womb. Yeah. The connection with the mom immediately from birth yeah. is typically higher. I, I would imagine that's almost, I wouldn't even say stereotypically. Yeah. I just think that's just natural result that's, of growing yeah, inside of correct. another person. You know? So the, the mom is immediately more likely... Not that every mom does, but more likely to feel that connection with the baby, whereas the dad doesn't as much. Right. So then, you know, they are the one feeding them. Now, you will have then the situations where the dad, whether it's breast milk is pumped or they're feeding formula, where the dad does a lot of the feeding. Mm -hmm. When a baby 
you know, when it's in this stage where it doesn't give you much feedback, <laughs> I don't know that it's so much, you know, they're there when it starts to reach and yeah. it starts to recognize. Yeah, yeah. And it starts to do those things where it knows that that is the mom and that is the dad, but it doesn't verbalize it. Just I'm saying it. Well, I mean, the yeah. baby boy or girl. That is, you know, the one that is feeding them and the one that's paying the most attention, or I should say the time with them Mm -hmm. is probably going to be a little bit more favored. That's one aspect. Yeah. The other is maybe one that might be a little bit more calm than the other. You know, there is just that tendency in in a sense. Um, And as an example, you know, a child that gets into the arms of a grandparent and all of a sudden is quiet. This happened with my kids where (laughs) my kids are screaming, yelling, whatever. And then my mom would hold the baby and immediately, you know, it's like, (laughs) just stop. Yeah. It's like, whoa, 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 whoa. What did you just do? Yeah. No, it's the baby whisper. What button did you press? Yeah. It's the baby whisper. (laughs) And you're just sitting there sort of dumbfounded and feeling a little stupid (laughs) that, you know, you can't calm the baby down. So the connection there is a little different. And that can be maybe the, you know, cause they say the baby can t- feel your tension or the baby can feel. And I can say, you know, when my baby was, my son was very small. It's like, of course I was tense. I'm, I'm who I am. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so the baby may or may not like that, right. you know, just that the tense, whatever you know, energy uh, you're, yeah, whatever it. energy yeah. you're giving off. And yeah. so that can be it also. For sure. So when it is a baby, you know, you might, as a dad, you might not feel the bond as much mm-hmm. with the baby. Right. I know I didn't, I didn't feel, you know, even though I would, you know, I try to do feedings or when they're sleeping. I remember actually very vividly when my child for the first time slept on my chest, like fell asleep mm-hmm. on me. Yeah. It was amazing. Like yeah. it was amazing feeling. We were actually at a friend's house and I actually, I really remember that moment. And, yeah. and my wife looks like came over and was like, oh, whoa, you know, like it happened like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but up to then, there was no way. I just he just yeah. he didn't, and also I maybe not have had that opportunity where I was sitting with him for a long period of time. Yeah, that's the other thing, right? Just so opportunities. The, so there's all these things that factor into yeah. the child or the baby, I should say, favoring one over the other. Yeah, I feel like when it's fresh out of the womb, it's like, yeah, I helped you make that. I think right. But that's about as far as it goes. <laughs> right. And that's a lot of times how it is. And yeah. so you just, you kind of just have to give up right. as the dad. Right. I'm talking about from the dad, but right. so you might feel that the child favors your wife. Right. And that is probably true. The thing to keep in mind then is to not take it personally. Yeah. Okay. You, you know, it's kind of hard, but you, ha- sure. you can't take it personally. And the other is to actually then make the effort. You know, oh, just right. because the baby is not. Yeah. Don't push it away right. or whatever. You yeah. know, and, and people will do that. Where they'll be like, oh, well, give him to me. He'll, he'll, he comes, you know, I'm able to calm him down and you're not, you know, or something <laughs> like that. That that happens, though, yeah. you know, like, oh, he needs to be calmed down. Oh, give him to, you know, and sometimes yeah. it might be the dad. Yeah. You know, where yeah. you just because the, the mom might be a little bit more chaotic and, and yeah. she's stressed or whatever. And, uh, you know, if, if traditionally the dad had a away from the the home the whole day yeah and all of a sudden comes home is a little bit more refreshed yeah then that's an opportunity to to you know take the baby so right, right. when it so when the the, the the infant is there i say the baby mm-hmm. that favoritism is a little bit you know sort of in the air if you will sure, it's not it's not sure. like a concrete thing it's, yeah it's hard to define at that moment yeah, yeah what happens is when the child becomes a toddler and that's the the second part second of our discussion phase, yeah. That's when it becomes a little bit more apparent. Yep. And it becomes a little more verbal and it becomes a little bit more. Um, there's a lot of more energy behind. Yeah. It. And I can imagine that's where it becomes a little more sensitive too. correct. Yeah. Okay. So as the dad and I can give you my own experience where my I came home from work one day and my son started like getting really upset saying no daddy home. Like he didn't want me home. <laughs> now, I mean, I didn't do anything to him. Yeah, I you're not like beating him or anything. But <laughs> my sense at that time was he knew that I'm going to get the attention of mom. Mm, yeah. Or he's not going to get as much attention. That's a pretty astute. astute I remember <laughs> that because yeah, he would get upset or a little bit like when I came like kind of in between or you know, and so there's. Like a little bit of that possession. Like, I mean, he's not consciously like no, no, but, uh, but he's just he's reacting to his own emotions. Right. So like, I get <laughs> yeah, not a fan of that guy. And I and that I remember, I, like I remember feeling really hurt. Yeah, like, you know, like 
Yeah, like, that's not cool. Like, oh my gosh, like that felt horrible. Yeah. You know, I helped create you. Yeah, I know. Well, yeah, <laughs> there's some tips from the professional not to say that. Okay. Uh, but that's how it feels. You're yeah. right. And yeah. and so when the, when your child is rejecting you, essentially, it doesn't feel very good. Yeah. And so and I can tell you another example was um, with both of my children, and and when my daughter was you know kind of like one, and my son's three, and taking baths, my wife who worked part time spent a lot more time with the kids during Mm. the day, you know, Mm -hmm. playing or whatever. I mean, just spent time with them. She brought them everywhere. She just, she played with them. She did all these things. They of course favored her for bath time as well. Right. Until there were certain circumstances. And I'll tell you what it is. I just kept on doing it. Mm -hmm. You know, I just kept on doing it. But initially it was like, we don't want dad to give us a bath. Mom, Right. Like, mom, we want mom to give you. Yeah. Bath. So some of the answers were, and especially if they're, if we were both in the room, mm-hmm. it was that mom was the choice for sure. Every time, <laughs> you know, just preferred mom. Sure. And they're not doing this on purpose. They're not like, no, I no. don't like dad. Yeah. I mean, it's, like, it's just, that's what they're familiar what happens with now. Right. <laughs> and that's, and I remember, yeah. <laughs> I remember getting really like upset about it, yeah. you know, and like <laughs> kind of walking out of the room and just like, God, I, I, I can't do anything. Like can't bother these kids. Right. Are they even mine? <laughs> you know? And I kind of had to just take a step back and be like, okay, this is by like, the way, they're kids. <laughs> they're, they're one and three. <laughs> yeah. can't, you know, they not thinking rationally. Yeah, exactly. And I have to sort of step back <laughs> and say, you know what? I just got to keep on it. I've got you know, I, these are my kids. I love them. Yeah. I'm going to have to make maybe some of the routine and be involved a little bit more with some right. of the routine, you right. know? And so their kids love routine. There's no question. They love routine. And so what can happen is, or what you could do is say, you know, so the kids know you could chart it, you know, and kind mm. of say Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, that's dad's day. Right. Tuesday, Thursday is mom's day, you know, and they may say, well, I like Tuesday better than Wednesday right. or something like that. Right. But basically you're still scheduling it. And so instead of saying, you know, you prefer it or something like that, or, you know, you're kind of just saying, well, this is, this is dad's day, you know, and the yeah. mom agrees with that or, or whatever, or vice versa. I mean, if it's your stay at home dad, yeah, the child is going to, or you're, you're, you know, you work from home or whatever, the child may have that same thing with you. Yeah, for sure. You know, so yeah. it's just about, I mean, I'm saying mom, dad, but it's basically whoever's spending more time. That makes sense. Totally makes sense. Yeah. So, yeah. So my kids, you know, would say like, no, I want mom to give us a bath or even to, you know, to bed, to be to sleep. Mm-hmm. And then it became something where my wife and I had talked and, and it was like, Hey, don't come in the room for her. Like stay downstairs because we have upstairs and that's where the bath oh, okay. is. Yeah. So stay downstairs. I'm going to do it. And then they became more and more comfortable with it and like, we're okay with it. And then it was funny because there were then days where, you know, my daughter would be like, no daddy. And I was like, yes. You know, like almost <laughs> just, no, I just, it was like, well, that felt really good. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it, it's, it's not a competition, but, no. but, but to then have the child be like, sure. yeah, I, I, I think that would be great that if you do that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, you and, felt a little better. Yeah, exactly. And it's kind of training them in a weird way. You know, like it's, it's like just getting them used to the idea of being around a certain person at certain times. And right. it, it, you've kind of already done that by virtue of just being there the whole time. Right. You've, you've kind of trained them. Cause I feel like this is a learned thing at this point. Sure. You know, yeah, so it's yeah, like yeah. one thing would just be nurturing, you know, you from the womb and everything. But the other thing is like when you're around them all the time, like you said, your wife was working part time. Um, they're just learning that that's the way it is during these periods of time. So right. why would it change? Right. And they're little, why heads. is daddy doing yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. For half my life, you've been doing, <laughs> right. you've been doing it this way. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and, and that becomes, or I guess it's determined based on the division of labor. So mm-hmm. I have a friend who, you know, every night, is he does the baths and reads mm-hmm. it's every night mm-hmm. that's you know that's his that's the routine in their house yeah so you know he's at work during the day whatever, and that's his routine so the kids are probably going to favor that mm-hmm. i don't know but you know i would wonder if they was like oh it's a special treat that mom's gonna do it or they were like no 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 why like <laughs> that's different why why are, yeah, yeah. why is that happening Ooh, what's the status quo here yeah <laughs> i mean and because most of the time like i said they do like routine yeah so it, it it's something that you just have to be mindful of. You got to communicate about it. Um, I got asked this question one time when I was doing a lecture and one of the guys had said, you know, should my wife just go out of town? And I said, I think that's a great idea. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. if, if you are normally not the one spending as much time, get some concentrated time with them. Sure. You know? And I noticed it gives her a break too. Yeah. I noticed that 
you know, what happens to, and we've talked in, in different aspects about this is, you know, if you are the, the, the parent who works mm. and you come home from being away, you have to really give them your attention right away. Sure. When you get home and that in itself of being really present and being really, you know, Hey, you know, coming into the house or whatever and immediately giving them that attention, that can be something different too, because then they really do look forward to you coming home versus just like you're coming home and like, Hey, what's up? You know, <laughs> it's like, it's not that big of a deal that you're home because yeah. you don't really pay attention to me anyway. Right, so, yeah. you know, right. and, and I'm, I'm saying this kind of jokingly, but it's true. It's like when we get home from a day, outside the, 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 you know, the home, we come home, maybe we change whatever we then are like, okay, let's going to eat dinner. Um, you know, if somebody's either doing homework or TV or whatever your routines are, mm. there's not a lot of connection that happens. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah, like, it's yeah. not until like, okay, maybe you read them, go to bed or you bathe yeah. them or something like that. Right. There's not a ton versus like coming home. I mean, and I remember too, I started making a lot more effort of that, you know, making that immediate connection. Yeah. And it was really cool. The effect that I had, because what happened is then when I got home, I remember my daughter would always give me running hugs. <laughs> like she literally was like, all right, dad, get ready. You know? And it was like this thing that when I came home, she wanted to greet me and because yeah. I was more affectionate. Yeah. And I was making the effort to do that. So, yeah, for sure. So that's, I mean, this is all stemming from, you know, having one parent be a favor over another, but yeah. basically it comes down to effort. <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah, no, it's true. It, it is. Yeah. It, it is the effort. You got to make so, the effort. I can, that's a big lesson here. Right. Right. Yeah. So the third part is the toddler. Oh, I'm mm. sorry, not the toddler, the young child. The young just, child. Yeah. We just did the child. Yeah. The toddler. Um, the, so the young child, like I said, we, we have some uh, expert opinion or an expert advice. Uh -huh. uh, this was from an article I saw uh, in parenting. Uh, parenting.com, which is parenting magazine. Oh, okay. Uh, Dr. Erica Reicher, I hope I'm pronouncing it right. <laughs> uh, author of the book, great, or I'm sorry, what great parents do. Mm -hmm. So tons of tips and tons of things. Uh, she had these five tips for dealing with when your child, you know, favors one parent over another, yeah. some of it encompasses what we've been talking about, but it's a little bit more specific. Mm -hmm. So first one is never respond in a negative way. Okay. So as an example, even if the child's being negative, you know, don't respond the same. So, um, as an example, really bad thing to say would be, well, you didn't want me to do that yesterday. <laughs> right. That kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Like being, Negative sarcasm Snarky or, or yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. any of that where you say, oh, so now you want me to do it. Right. Or like now you want me to read to you. Well, you didn't want me to read to you yesterday. Right. You know? Yeah. I can't. I've, of course, have never said anything. <laughs> <laughs> my my um, appreciation for sarcasm sometimes leaks into my, yeah, parent, my parenting. Yeah, I can picture that happening. But, um, but that makes <laughs> sense. So just never respond in a negative way to your child. Mm -hmm. Try not to. Yeah. Yeah. Not that you can never, but right. you're trying not to. Trying not to. Um, second one, the E word empathy, mm -hmm. react with empathy. Right. So if your child says, I want mommy to do this, you can answer with, you know what? I hear that you, you know want what? So do I. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's again, going back to the not being a you know, snarky, yeah, so <laughs> sarcastic you'd say, remark. You know, I hear you want mommy mm -hmm. and I know you really love mommy. Mm -hmm. Um, but, you know, let me help you with that yeah. or whatever. And you're you're really recognizing their emotion and their mm -hmm. feelings. And um, you, know, you want the child to feel like they're being heard. Yeah. So which is a common theme, you yeah. know, is yeah. the empathy. So react with empathy yeah. is one way to do that. Silver medal's good, too. <laughs> Silver medal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, that can be second best, you know. Yeah. <laughs> out, of, out of two. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> the dog is second. Yeah, yeah. Third. The dog's like it. Uh, number three, ensure each parent strikes a balance between work and fun. Mm -hmm. So what can happen is one parent is known as the work. The yeah. other parent is known as the fun. Yeah. So you're the parent who always makes them clean mm -hmm. and always makes them do stuff and, you know whatever it is. Yeah. Whereas 
when dad comes home, mm-hmm. he's the fun guy. Yeah. He wants to just play games or vice right. versa, you know, whatever. I had the opposite where I knew somebody who went through this where they're, um, they were raised by their mom and the mom was very caring and nurturing. And, but anything went wrong, they'd call the dad. Oh, and then yeah. the dad had to be the disciplinarian. Like, don't do that. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. And so he became kind of the bad guy in a weird way. And when my friend was telling me, like, you know, like, I realized that later on in life, I looked at my father you know, and as, as a bad person because... <laughs> He always came with discipline. Yeah, there's there's, kind there's of so much difficulty that comes with that. If, yeah. It, it, you know, those kinds of words were like, wait till your father gets home. Yeah, such yeah, a, yeah. <laughs> and it's almost an old school way of parenting. Like, I think that... Yeah, the mom was soft and yep. the dad was a disciplinarian. And yeah. It's just... It, it shouldn't be like no, that. No, of I course mean, not. Because you develop all these weird issues later in life, and then you have to kind of you don't want to do that to every single generation. So right. I think it gets better and better as generations go further. And, and that's a discussion that if you are the parent who is the disciplinarian, mm-hmm. it's a discussion where you have to have the other one be the disciplinarian yeah. as well. It, yeah. it, you just it's got to be a concerted and it a joint effort. Becomes really, really unfair. And if you're like abusing your kids, don't like oh you need the whipping now. You know they don't do that. But like <laughs> but basically you need to both be responsible for the good and the bad what you're right. trying to say right yeah. right yeah. there has to be the balance of the work and yeah the fun yeah. that's a, good or bad you yeah. can say that yeah, yeah. the yin uh, and the yang yeah so when dad <laughs> comes home we're gonna just have fun and play and whatever yeah. it's like okay well dad needs to be a little bit serious and vice versa mom maybe you need to have a little bit of fun during the day sure or what, whatever yeah um so that's an important one um number four formulate a predictable schedule so which we just talked about yep that's hard to do. Yeah. Alternating duties though. So, you know, mom is not the only one to read at night or give the bath. And, or like I said, um, you know, instead dad's doing it because it's Monday mm-hmm. or because it's Wednesday or whatever. And if you have that kind of schedule and even write it out, mm-hmm. you know, have a chart and you have the different days. I mean, especially when the kids are young, they see a picture and then they have dad yeah. and they see a picture and then they see mom or whatever, you know, that, that can be helpful for them. It's mm-hmm. kind of this guide like, so oh, that's what mom does. That's what dad does. And that's, you know, that that's a real easy way to sort of not then have that combative yeah. Thing and, sh- and sh- right. And Sue. So you're not pitting each other against each other. Yeah. No. Yeah. So, you know, well, no, dad always reads on Mondays. Yeah. Like, that's what happens. You know? Yeah. Right. Um, if you can have that kind of schedule, you know, sometimes, yes. sometimes yeah, it doesn't always permit. Right. That, but, and then the fifth one above all focus on love and respect, love and respect. So, you know, you always want to try to maintain that connection. And I said about, you know, coming home, from work or whatever it is, you know, of, of making that effort right away, Yeah, you know, and being present and doing that, um, kindness, respect, love, all of them are crucial, Mm. you know, no matter what. So, you know, your kids may show you that you are the favorite or you're the, not the favorite. Um, when you are the favorite, it might be helpful to assist in the balance, you know, go away. (laughs) Let, um, out, let your spouse do some of those things that are the favorites of your, of your kids, Yeah, you know, and then vice versa. If you are the not favorite, yeah, you have to make more effort. I feel like they're old enough. You can almost convince them. Hey, you should go do that with mommy. You know, like you kind of talk to them a little bit about that. Well, so it's funny, you know, this was a mistake, but, um, you know, we, we, sometimes you have those conversations where you say, so who do you like better, <laughs> you know, or something like yeah. that. Um, it's not a good conversation, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> which, you know, but what's funny, I, I wasn't, a, I probably wouldn't be at, or I wasn't as offended because I already knew my kids favored, you know, I, I wouldn't want to force them to say it. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, I already knew that, you know, my wife, was their favorite. My wife was a little bit more nurturing. She spent more time with them. But I mean, that it is what it is. Yeah. So for me, I had to make a conscious effort to be more affectionate and to mm-hmm. make sure that I had that quality time, you know, and, and like so when those opportunities come up, I take advantage of them. It's now I go the camping or, yeah, yeah. you know, or when I get home, I do make that effort to make sure that I'm paying attention to them or yeah. there's just all those kinds of things that as a dad, you should be doing <laughs> and they're hard sometimes to remember. And well, that's yeah. the thing. They're hard to remember. So you have right. to make conscious effort to do these things. So, right. Yeah. I think because I mean, sometimes it's not your nature right. to do it. I mean, if you're not an affectionate person and you weren't given a ton of affection, mm-hmm. it may not. Well, I mean, I was given affection, but you know, 
But even then, you don't know not how to as trans- much as my wife gives. Yeah, you exactly. Know, like, and then you don't know how to translate that affection as if you're being quote unquote rejected. So right. you try. So you don't know that maybe you think, well, if you're not getting the affection back, then I'll just back off. Right. And then that goes against your nature. You're more like, you know, that's not working. I'm just going to try something else. Absolutely. Now you're like, no, let me try this. Yeah. No, absolutely. <laughs> Keep making this work. If uh, you have any um, tips or ideas on, you know, how to balance this and, and or you've had experiences where one child. Yeah, we'd love to hear from or you. one parent's the favorite. Of it. Yeah. Uh, podcast at dudes to dads dot com. That's right. Uh, Twitter at Twitter. dudes to dads. Yeah. Facebook. Dudes to dads com. Dudes to dads com. <laughs> and uh, please leave us some reviews on iTunes and Stitcher. Can't stress that enough. It really helps with the, the rankings and the ratings and gets in the ears of other people. So if you like the episode or if you don't even like it, leave us a review and say, hey, this wasn't all that great. No, don't do that. But leave a review. No. <laughs> I mean, don't. No, no bad reviews. We no, don't no. Have the it's never going to have a bad one. I'm, I'm daring you to leave it. But no, actually, just please leave a good no, one. because we don't have can. the ability to not post it. <laughs> please leave a review. If you have regardless. criticisms, please email us. That's that's okay. That's Constructive okay. criticisms. We just don't want the whole helpful. world to see it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I don't mind seeing it, but I don't want the whole world to see yeah. what I'm doing wrong. Yeah. I, I well, your voice here. is a little bit of this. Your mic is Well, don't is go this. into those details. Right. We don't need that. But if you your have content input, is horrible. Yeah. We have input like that. Hey, we, or you may want to talk more about blah, what blah, we should blah. do. Yeah. 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 I think we should cover teens more. I just don't have that experience. I know, and I want to hear from people who, yeah, if, if anyone in the audience, you have teenager things that you want to talk oh, about? Oh, that's a good, yeah. Well, I might right, have to have right some in. guests then. Yeah, maybe get some people on here. That'd be a good future thing to talk about. I yeah. can I can note that down. <laughs> cool. In my... I'm like a computer machine. Yeah. So with that, Alan, thank you for another episode. Great. I think we'll we'll be back next week. Yeah. I don't know what the topic's going to be, though. Yeah. That's why we wing it. But something exciting. We're not going to wing it. I'm going to prep for it. I just now have a week to prep for it. Yeah, that's right. You come in and wing it. So, all right. We will uh, see you next time. See you next time. Take care.